CJ Ryder. That's right. <laughs> How you doing? I'm awesome and amazing, that as is, usual. That is so good to hear. Welcome to Members Only. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Um, you are a new addition to Members Only. Yeah. You coming in a whole nother lane. <laughs> <laughs> whole nother lane. And allow me to break this down. So I went on Amazon and saw how to eat a banana, right? Mm-hmm. So from my understanding before actually getting my hand on the book, mm -hmm. this ain't got nothing to do with fruit, daily fruit intake. No, it doesn't. Okay. But how, okay, so you said you went on Amazon. First I saw your video on TikTok. Like, oh, okay, because I'm like, what are you doing on Amazon looking up? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's TikTok. I saw the video and went viral. Right. I started, you know, just doing some research before we reached out. And you're and, like, oh, this is really a book. Let me, there's a funny story. So um, I also manage um, artists, okay. hip hop artists. Yep. So one of my artists, um, Callie, we have a, a um, artist deal with Atlantic Records. And we had flown to New York to meet with the top execs, with yep. Julie, Lonray, Kaiser, you know, Craig, everybody. And we were in a meeting. This is the first time I'm meeting Julie and um, Lonray and all of the top execs. And we're, we were at um, Say Less at yep. the table eating. Mm -hmm. And Callie's product manager at the time, Jason Wesley, he knew about my book and Sammy, the A&R, they knew about the book, but none of the top execs did. So I was like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna keep that mm, kind of mm. separate. You know, I'm in my manager role right now, managing my artists, we don't have anything. So Jason says, CJ, why don't you tell Julie, because I'm sitting next to Julie, why don't you tell Julie about your book? And I'm like, oh. Jason, this isn't the time, oh. you know? So Julie, um, an older white woman, she says, yeah, tell me about your book, CJ. Mm. <laughs> so I'm like, mm. what's the name of it? Mm. And I'm like, um, <laughs> how to eat a banana. And she's like, oh, so you teach black people how to eat healthy? And I was like, shut up. No, <laughs> I teach women how to eat that dick. So she was like, she turned beet red. <laughs> Ooh. And, but that broke the ice, and we're really, really cool now. So yeah, just a little funny story. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so as I go through this book, mm -hmm. um, some it's illustrated system. it is illustrated because you can explain things um but it's better when you have an illustration so that when you get to the experience you you can kind of move around a little bit better like somebody can tell you how honey tastes but you'll never know how honey tastes unless you actually put it on your tongue got it you have to taste it the illustrations um my eyes are starting to water a little bit it's <laughs> It's, Why are your eyes? Boy. boy um. <laughs> I mean, it's explicit. It's written explicitly. Yes, ma'am. It's no fluff. Mm, it's straight to the straight point. facts. Um, because there are other books that make women think that great oral pleasure is about tricks and tips and techniques. When that's not, that couldn't be further from the truth. It's more mental than it is physical. Yep. So when you're performing or you're pleasing your partner, if you're doing it and you're treating it like it's a chore or a task, like mm. washing dishes or cleaning the bathroom, it's not gonna feel the same. That's like somebody giving you a gift reluctantly. Well, I did this because I want you to do this. or you. So that, that's just not the way you do it. That's not how you show your man you appreciate him and you love him and you convey your mm. love. Like, no, you, you wanna do it just because you want to see him happy. Like if you can take 15 minutes out of your day to do something that your partner likes to make them feel happy, to make them feel loved. If you could do just a small thing, take a little time out of your day to do something to show your love to your partner and to make them happy, why wouldn't you? All right. Why wouldn't you do that? All right. And it just so happens that for most men, Blowjobs make them happy. Mm. So why wouldn't you want to make your man happy? Why wouldn't you want to relieve his stress? Like blowjobs, they relieve stress. And 
and it doesn't have to be the whole thing with you know like with sex multiple rounds and mm -hmm. that's just something that you can do he comes home he's already had a bad day he's already called you on the phone and told you you know he got into it with so and so at work or it's just everything the world is on his shoulders why wouldn't you want to help him relax when he got home why not why not you know got it yes so my motto in relationships mm -hmm. is be his peace and his porn star Mm. And that will make him, like, if you treat him better than you've ever treated him before, he'll treat you better than you've ever been treated before. So it starts with you and the giving, because my love language is acts of service and okay. touch. Mm. Those, those are my love language. So in relationships, I'm naturally nurturing. I'm naturally serving because I like putting a smile on my man's face and in return, he bends over backwards and jumps through hoops mm. to keep me happy. He likes seeing me happy. And I just think that when women do it the way I say in the book, then with their men, it becomes, he associates pleasure with her. So if he associates pleasure with her, then he's going to associate his getting pleasure with making her happy. Mm -hmm. So he's going to do anything in his power to make and keep her happy mm -hmm. because she's doing what she needs to do to make and keep him happy. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you got to have a pleasing attitude. Just sucking his dick every day is not going to make up for being a nagging woman or, you know, dominant and all those other things. You have to have other things, too, but a pleasing personality like mine. A pleasing personality. Yeah. Um, what was your inspiration for this I was book? broke and I needed some money. Okay. <laughs> so I wrote a book. Um, at the time that I wrote the book, I was an intern at Streets 94.5 radio station. And I was, um, I was, I'm a former adult entertainer. I used to be a stripper. Mm -hmm. So I'm skilled in the art of seduction. And skilled I skilled in the art of seduction. I'm highly skilled in the art of Unpack seduction. Unpack that, please. Okay, so when men go to a strip club, they go there for the fantasy. Yep. They go there to get away from their everyday life. And when I was a stripper, it was my job to sell them that dream. To mm. sell because it was a job for me. I'm not going home with you. I'm not doing anything other than selling you a fantasy and being your dream girl while you're here. And men would talk to talk to me and tell me about their problems and whatever. And it was my job to listen, not to give them advice, not to nag them, not to do anything. It was just my job to be pretty and to allow him to vent about what was going on in his life. And in return, he would give me all his money. Got it. So my job was to separate him from his wallet. Mm. <laughs> that was my job. And I looked at it as a business, but in it, I had to seduce him. I had to take his mind off of the cares of the world in order for him to freely give me all of his money. And that's what seduction does. You, you are able to put a person at ease and make them feel like their fantasies are being fulfilled. So I'm highly skilled in doing that, but I don't just do it. Like I seduce my man, but it's because I love him. You get what I'm saying? So I'm not out here just seducing everybody. But I'm highly skilled at the art of seduction, so I can teach other women how to be a little bit more pleasant and pleasing and how to communicate with men in a way that they listen. Like, you can communicate or talk to men in a way that you talk to your homegirls. It's not going to connect with him. You have to talk to him in the way that he listens. That's the only way it's going to get through to him. And it's not by acting like you're his mom or treating him like a child. That's definitely mm. not the way to get through to a man. Nagging him, cursing at him, yelling at him is gonna push him further away. But if you learn how to talk to him in a way that conveys your emotions without being emotional, then he wants to help and he's like, oh, I understand. And he wants to do whatever. Cause most men, they're not, they don't wanna be confrontational with the women that they love. But a lot of us, we don't know how to convey what we want in a way that's not emotional. So, and saying, you did this or you did that, you can say stuff like, you know, when this happened, I felt this way because it's our job to connect men with their emotions. Because you're taught, most men are taught from a very, very young age that it's weak to show emotions. Men mm -hmm. shouldn't cry. Mm -hmm. So 
those little boys grow up into be grown little boys or you know grown men but they still have that in their subconscious that they don't show emotion so a lot of men are not in touch with their emotions so as a woman we're in touch with our emotions it's our job to help him get in touch with his emotions and convey it to him without being overly emotional you get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. Yeah, so when you learn how to talk to him in a way that he listens, that conveys your emotions, it gives you a good synergy with him, and it helps him to understand and give you what you need without you having to nag. In fact, if you do it, he'll go out of his way to figure out what you need before you even need it and just start doing stuff. Babe, I did this for you. Babe, did... like, I naturally attract men that want to take care of me. Mm. I naturally, when I'm at the grocery store, Men, these, and these are random men, not people that I know, and I'm not giving my numbers or anything. They want to take my groceries and put them in a the car for me. Um, I'm getting ready to move, and I went to a box company to purchase boxes. Mm -hmm. And I backed my car up to the loading dock, and I like being served and waited on. So I'm in the car, I'm sitting there, and they brought the boxes out, and I'm like, well, when are they going to put them in the car? Mm. <laughs> so I get out of the car, and the lady at the loading dock, she's like, is there anything else? I was like... <laughs> Right, because the boxes, they're just sitting there. Mm -hmm, and I was mm -hmm. like, well, aren't they going to load them for me? She was like, no, ma'am, we don't load. Mm -mm. And I was like, oh, <laughs> well, how are they going to get in the car? <laughs> She's mm. like, you're going to put them in the car. And I was like, oh. Yep. And there was a guy. Because <laughs> <laughs> <Yep. laughs> it still wasn't clicking. I was like, you want me to lift this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't do the heavy lifting. So there was a, a guy that was in a car that was next to mine. I hadn't spoken to him. I hadn't. We hadn't had a conversation. He's sitting in his car. I'm sitting in my car. But he saw what was going on. He got out of his car. He said, ma'am, I'll put him in a car for you. I'm like, thank you so much. I allowed him to put him in a car, and that was that. There's no number exchange. There's no we're going out to dinner. None of that. It's just being able to accept little gestures and acts of kindness because I think when you're in your feminine energy and you're in your power as a woman, men are attracted to that type of energy and they just naturally want to mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. for you. And I think a lot of times, especially as a successful woman and alpha women mm -hmm. have, for, I, well, I wouldn't say forgotten, have had to take care of themselves for so long that they don't allow anybody else to step in and do that for them. So I kind of try and help women reconnect with that part. Like, yes, you have the degrees, you have the you know the title mm -hmm, you have mm -hmm. the money you have this but do you have the love that you mm. want from the man that you want it from because it's easy to settle right and say okay well he doesn't have this this that or the other but i want to do mine like russell will um russell wilson said he did with sierra he said that he had five non-negotiables and he wasn't gonna settle for four or three or two of them. He wanted all five of them. And that's the thing, you can have everything you want. You just have to know what your non-negotiables are. Mm -hmm. So yeah. You're online a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Do you see what's going on with us online, the war? in regards to relationships, the black community. Oh, I was like, you crying? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, and there's a reason why I bring this up because listening to how you break things down, mm -hmm. your philosophy on taking care of your mate, mm -hmm. um, your, your love languages, um, mm -hmm. what you bring, I think, is needed. Um, I don't know if you're paying attention online, but we are at each other's oh, throats. Oh, yeah, I see that should, okay, I see the conversation about, is it the mother or the wife who sits in the front seat? I'm like, whoever gets to the seat first. <laughs> <laughs> right. But um, it's, it's money. It's, it's right. It's about money. Should we go 50 50? And my whole thing is do what works for you. There's no cut and dry recipe for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's not all black and white. But there are some things that I think I, I'm traditional in relationships like in business. I think I'm considered um, an alpha woman. And and I don't even like really using that term. It's just that I'm no nonsense and I don't take crap yep. from nobody yep. you, but in my relationship with my partner I'm submissive I like to be of service I like to serve I like I just like that you it's, it's just a part of me or who I am and I think a lot of times we get in this this way of ain't nobody telling me what to do and mm. the neck rolling mm. and da 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 and it's not about that because if you if you pick a partner 
who you trust to lead you, then why would he tell you anything wrong? If he has your best interest at heart, then what he's telling you is for both of your best interests, right? So is it that you are picking partners that you don't trust to lead? Because you haven't practiced discernment? Because you've given your heart to fuck boys so long? Mm. Now you don't know how to discern between a good man and one that's undeserving? So that means that a lot of women are going into relationships and, and I think it comes from childhood because women are sold these fairy tales and these fantasies about what real love is and they waiting for mm. Prince Charming or somebody, you know, their knight in shining armor, this, that, and the other. And, and then you have these, these IG role models and people that are putting on, you know, putting on fake, they capping, they putting on for the gram, but that's not really how they're living. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just like a lot of misguidance and people not taking the time to really vet your partner. Like, um, you have to inspect what you expect. So in getting to know people, a lot of times what women, what we do is we meet a guy, we like him. He has this, that, and the other, and now you're planning your whole life with him. But you don't really know his character. Mm -hmm. So now you, and now you start having sex, and now you are emotionally attached to somebody who you probably don't even really like for real because you haven't taken the time to actually get to know the person. So I think in relationships, when you meet somebody, it should be, are we compatible to be around each other? Not even sexually compatible, mm -hmm. but are we compatible? Do we like each other without romance? Like, can we hang out? Can we kick it? Can we have conversation? And I think that should be the first, but I think in a, in a great relationship, you have to have similar core values, you have to have a similar moral compass, and then also you have to be intellectually compatible, yep. you have to be physically compatible, yes, you have to be sexually compatible, mm. and you have to be emotionally compatible. You may not have to have the same faith, but you have to you know, have some type of balance in there. Yes, and I think that's what makes a great relationship. But a lot of us are taught, women especially, that you need to marry a man for finances. Make sure he can take care of you. Well, he can take care of you financially, but what if he don't meet your emotional needs? You, what if he has a different moral compass? Like, you want monogamy, but he wants a harem. Mm. That's not compatible, so it's gonna end in divorce or you're gonna split. So I just think that people need to figure out what they really want and what they mm -hmm. really require mm -hmm. and see if the person that they're meeting match those things mm -hmm. beyond the physical, beyond the chemistry. Because chemistry means we'll be good at making babies together. Mm. That doesn't mean that we'll be good at spending the rest of our life together. Amen. That means I want to hump your bones and you want to hump mine. But it doesn't mean we should. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. with all the problems we got in the community in regards to dating and our, our people, mm -hmm. if they eat more bananas, will that kind of resolve the issue um well the thing is the book okay so it's called how to eat a banana because i it was a catchy title but if you read the first chapter of it the the chapter is about mindset, mindset. so it's about changing your mindset mm -hmm. and your attitude and the way you approach relationships so um most people see relationships as transactional yep. what are you going to do for me what am i going to get out of it you know and that's just that's just not the right way to approach it. Like, are we mutually beneficial to each other? Can we help each other grow? Can we uplift each other? Like, those are the things that you should be concerned about in creating a relationship and spending your life with somebody, when you're considering spending your life with somebody. And I just think um, enough people don't do that. And that, so that right there, so eating a banana or giving your man head every day or doing that for someone who is a cheater is not going to stop him from being a cheater. Mm. Doing it for somebody who's abusive is not going to stop him from being abusive. This is for my classes, my books, my courses and seminars are for women who have good men who are doing their job, okay. who are providers, who are taking care of them, and they just want to show him how much he loves and appreciates, you know, how much she loves and appreciates him. Mm -hmm. 
That's what my books are for. Like you want to keep that synergy going in your relationship and you want to lessen the chances of him stepping out because he has everything at home. Mm -hmm. That's what mine is for. It's not going to make somebody love you. Mm. It's not going to make a person it's be what the they're potion, not. not the magic potion, huh? No, it's not a mm. magic potion for that. That's for like we already have a good relationship okay. and we want to keep it good. We want to make it better. That, you know, it's not like if a person doesn't love you, sucking his dick ain't going to make him love you. Mm. I mean, will it? I don't know. Come on. But <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I don't know, though, because. <laughs> but if he's already has love for you, he's yep. already leaning in that way, yep. it can help sway. It can help tilt the scale in your favor. If Like if you guys are, are dating. Yep. And you're in the getting to know each other stage, but you're not exclusive. And maybe he has an option over here that he's considering and he's considering you too. And all mm. both of you have really good qualities. But now you know how to snatch his soul. Well, baby girl, bye bye. Mm. You know, because you just took him. Mm. Yeah. So for those who would like to get in touch with you in mm -hmm. regards to um, classes and seminars, mm -hmm getting the book, just being able to book you and being able to add value to your brand, mm -hmm. how do they go about that? So for, I have a, mass, a new master class that I just launched online and it's um, Rider University, which is Rider and the letter U, Rider with a Y, okay. the letter U dot com. Um, they can reach out to me on my social media platform at I am CJ Rider, that's Rider with a Y. Um, also, they can email me, support at Rider U. Yeah, the book is on Amazon, it's in Barnes & Noble, it's on Kindle, it's on Audible. You can find it anywhere that books are sold. So, mm. yeah. Thank you for being you. You're welcome. <laughs> I love being me. You are the real MVP. Thank you. Um, your expertise mm -hmm. and wanting to please, like, people underestimate that. Mm -hmm. And we ain't even talking about non sexual right now. Just the art of wanting to please and being submissive and serving. That means a lot. And exactly. You well, the thing is, like, okay, so look. When I, a blowjob a day is, a, an occur like, a blowjob a day is frequent. In my relationship, that's a frequent occurrence. But it's my choice. It's not that it's required or it's not that it's demanded. And don't get me wrong, like, like if, you don't want to give your man amazing blowjobs. You don't have to. If his love language is cooked food or, you know, mm -hmm. meals, then Meet figure out there. how to yeah. make his favorite dish. Mm -hmm. You can surprise him with breakfast in the morning. Get mm -hmm. up a little bit early and mm -hmm. surprise him with breakfast in the morning. You can take him lunch, you know, during while he's working. You can stock the fridge with his favorite beverages and his favorite foods just to show him that you're thinking of him. But it's just like, from my approach, it's just that, like I said, if you could take 15 minutes out of your day to do something, something to take the stress off of your partner or something that your partner loves to make them happy, then why wouldn't you do it? It just right. so happens that most men do love blowjobs. And if you can do that to take a little bit of stress off, why wouldn't you, you know? So it's like, my motto is, you can, you, if you surprise him with breakfast in the bed, in the morning, breakfast in bed in the morning, he's going to smile for a moment. Mm. He's going to be happy for a little while. But if you surprise him with a side of head, he's going to be smiling all damn day. You know what I'm saying? So you should run that's for, just the way. <laughs> you should run for president, CJ Ryder. I, I have 2024. no. 2024. I have no desire to run this country. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, darling. Um, thank you. You're for being here. Um, when I tell you we are really going to help push your movement, we're going to do that. Um, Thank you. Anything we can do to add value. Oh, absolutely. You Let's put it together. Diamond. Let's promote this course. Women sign up right now. We have a special going on for $197. It's usually $697 to enroll in the master class. But if you sign up now, you can enroll for $197. CJ Ryder, you are God sent. Thank you. Trust and believe it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to members only. Thank you for the, having me. I'm is, so happy to be a member. The best is yet to come, my dear. All right. Thank you, my good sister.